Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's solve a couple of problems related to damping oscillations. In this case, we will talk about viscose environment. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture and all other lectures from the website because it's a course, which means there is a logical sequence between lectures, there is a menu. Uh, which basically brings you from the, the whole topic physics for teens uh, to certain um, parts. Now, right now we are talking about waves. This is the part of this course. And in particular, we're talking about mechanical oscillations. And this is the problem related to oscillations in a viscose environment. Uh, now, this website contains also the prerequisite course, Mass for Teens. Uh, you cannot study physics without knowing mass, especially calculus. So, I suggest you to refer to Mass for Teens part of this course, of this website, I mean, uh, if there is anything uh, missing in your, um, in your calculus knowledge. Anyway, so, we will talk about uh, oscillations in a viscose environment. Now, what's important about viscose environment, um, which is different, by the way, from um, the previous um, topic which I was discussing, um, damping oscillations when there is a friction involved. Uh, friction introduces the constant force of resistance to oscillations. This cause environment actually is different because um, it resists the movement um, depending on the speed of movement. If the object moves slowly in a viscose environment, let's say you are moving in the water. Um, whenever you're moving slowly, there is no problem. Basically, water doesn't really um, resist your movement. But if you try to move faster, well, the faster you move, the stronger will be the force of the water to resist your movement. So when we are talking about damping oscillations, which uh, are occurring in viscose environment, we have to, in addition to some kind of a spring or whatever else is initiating the oscillations, we have to consider the resistance force of the environment which is, well, generally speaking, proportional to speed. So, the, the lecture um, which preceded this particular <coughs> problem, uh, they were actually dealing with uh, equation of motion where there are forces of the spring, which involves the um, oscillation, obviously, and the, uh, the force of resistance, which is proportional to speed. Now, um, the mathematics of this are, well, not very complex, but involved. So, this particular problem is not about deriving something like an equation of motion, which basically I was doing during the uh, previous lectures. This is about, okay, let's say that the motion is given to you and the motion is uh, damping oscillations and in a such a way that it actually is a result of viscose movement. And now I would like to determine certain characteristics of the movement, like where it goes back to equilibrium, where it receives the um, deviates to, to a maximum um, distance from the equilibrium, etc. So this is this particular lecture about given the equation of motion determine certain characteristics of the movement. Okay, so here is the equation of motion. X is deviation from the uh, equilibrium point. T is time, obviously. And I have it as 4 times e to the power minus t over 2 times cosine of 5t minus p over 4. I just
took it from the from the head. I mean, there is no significance in in any kind of the numbers. What is significant? Significant is this multiplier, because as t is increasing, this multiplier is decreasing. So if t is equal to zero, it's one, and as t goes to infinity, this goes to zero, staying positive. So basically this is the graph of e to the power of t over 2. Uh, by the way, the graph of the whole function is presented in the notes for this lecture. Now this lecture, as any other, has notes. It's on the unisor.com website. And the graph is really important. It helps to solve the problem. Now, I will just draw it here, but whenever you will review the problem, it's uh, in the notes. Now, cosine is obviously a periodic function. So what happens here is the following. Without this multiplier, <coughs> cosine would look like this. But with this multiplier, as we are moving um, down the time, we are decreasing the deviation from the um, from the equilibrium. So the whole graph would look like this. So if this is my e to the power of minus t over 2, the graph would be something like this. Well, actually, it goes from both ways. It diminishes on both pluses and minuses. That's how it will go. So every extremum, maximum or minimum, will be multiplied by some positive number which is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's why you will have this type of, um, this type of graph. So this is a guiding, guiding lines for maximum values. And this is the real graph. My first problem is, uh, based on this equation of motion, I would like to find out where we are returning to the equilibrium points. Not where, when. Where on the time axis. So when, at what time moments, we will return to equilibrium. So if we, if we start from some, some point, we stretch the spring, let's say. Let's say the whole thing is in water. So we stretch the spring and let it go. So it starts oscillating. And uh, that's how it will go through the equilibrium point and then back to the another extreme, but it will be smaller and then another extreme squeeze this is a uh, stretch this is squeeze stretch squeeze etc okay so how can i determine the points of equilibrium well it's just an equation basically x of t is equal to zero i have to solve it well how to solve it very easily now if this is equal to zero this multiplier never equals to zero so it's basically cosine equals to zero now when cosine is equal to zero 5t minus pi over 4 equals to 0. Well, the cosine equals to 0 when angle is equal to pi over 2 plus n times pi. Right? If you forgot trigonometry, review it, please. <coughs> but that's the... Uh, okay, so and this is 5t minus p over 4. So whenever my argument is equal to this, where n is basically any integer number. Now, from this, we can find out 5t is equal to, uh, what is it, 3 pi over 4 
plus now let me do this also over 4 4 n pi over 4 so I will this is a common denominator and now I can take pi out of the parenthesis and I will have this now I will get rid of this and I put here 20 this is the answer so now what kind of n now I said it's any integer well actually not exactly because if n is negative then the whole thing would be negative which is not good because this is a time so t is time so it's supposed to be positive so n is any integer starting from 0 so n is equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. all non-negative integer numbers so this is the answer to the problem of when exactly we are returning to equilibrium now what's important here what's important is that if n increases by 1 no matter what it is the whole thing will increase by 4 pi over 20 which is pi over 5 so this is my point the distance between these is pi over 5 constant distance so no matter how far we deviate from the equilibrium we will always return to equilibrium with exactly the same intervals that's what makes um, uh, calling this particular um, uh, movement like almost periodical now a true periodical movement is when there is a complete repetition so if in if amplitude would not decrease it would be a pure um, periodic movement with amplitude decreasing all the time I can't really say it in a pure sense of the word that this is a periodic however it's almost periodic because it's really returning to the same position which is equilibrium after the same interval of time constant interval of time so as time goes by I'm returning to equilibrium with exactly the same intervals now <coughs> you understand that as soon as our amplitude is decreasing the distance which the object is supposed to cover from one extreme to another getting smaller but the speed probably is also getting smaller and that's why the timing of returning is exactly the same so from this extreme to this extreme the time would be the same thing as from this extreme to this extreme otherwise we would not have equality of the timing okay so that's my first problem now my second problem is where exactly we are reaching the maximum of the amp uh, of, of uh, um, absolute value of deviation so this is this is and this is and this is our points where my deviation goes to maximum so these are local extremum of the function and the question is how can I find the local extremum well let's go back to mathematics and we know that for any function good function smooth function differentiable function if you would like to find points where it actually achieves its maximum value well maximum value is where the horizontal um, tangential line exists right if it's tangential and if it's horizontal it's a local in this case maximum in this case minimum extremum okay 
So, um, when is it occurring? Well, you know from the mass, from the calculus, that to find the local extremum, you just have to find the derivative of this function. Now, derivative is a tangent of the angle of the uh, tangential line with, with x-axis, or in t-axis in this particular case. So whenever the first derivative is equal to zero, tangent of this angle is zero, that's the local uh, maximum or local minimum. So all we have to do is to solve equation. First derivative is equal to zero. So the previous um, problem was solving the equation x of t is equal to zero to find these points, these points. Now this, if we want to find this point, and this point, and this point, then we have to find the, co uh, the, the, uh, the solution to this equation. Okay, so let's just take the derivative of this thing, and again, I hope you remember how to, uh, to take the derivative. So, um, it's product of two function, and you know that if you have a product of two function, it's the first function uh, uh, derivative times the second plus this is u, this is u. Okay? So, this is the rule for having a derivative of the product. So this is the product of this and this. Well, 4 is just a constant multiplier, so it's applied to everything. All right, so uh, 4 times. So it's the first function, derivative of the second function. Okay, e to the minus t over 2. Now, derivative of the cosine is minus sine. So I have to put minus here, minus 1 times sine of whatever it is. But this is uh, the function of function. The first function is 5t, the second function is cosine. Whenever you have these combined functions, you have to go into the inner function um, uh, uh, derivative, and the inner function is 5t minus 5, 4, minus 5, 4. Derivative of this is just a plain function, so that's 5. Okay, plus. Now we have to take derivative of this and the function of this. Now derivative of e to the power is the same e to the power, and then we have an inner function, which is minus 1, 2 derivative. e to the minus t over 2. And then the function the second function remains as it is. So that's my uh, derivative and it's equal to zero. Now I can obviously get rid of 4, I can get rid of e to the power because it's never equal to zero. So what do I have? Well I have minus this times 5, so it's minus 5, minus 5 sine of 5t minus p over 4 uh, minus 1 half uh, cosine of the same thing minus p over 4 okay And this is supposed to be equal to zero. Okay. Now uh, it's minus and minus and it's zero, so I can I can make it plus and plus. It's easier. I don't like fractions, so I will multiply by two, and I will have ten here. So if I will put cosine to one place with a minus sign and then divide every so it's 10 sine of 5t minus pi over 4 equals minus cosine of 5t minus pi over 4. If I divide by this, 
I will have ten tangent of five t minus pi over four. Right sine divided by cosine as a tangent is equal to minus one, or tangent is equal to 0 0.1, I divide by 10. From which 5t minus pi over 4 is equal to arc 10 of minus 0 0.1. Now, tangent has a periodicity of pi, so I have to add pi times n, where n is any integer. Now, from here I can just get the t is equal to, so pi uh, over 4 goes to there, so it's arc tangents of minus 0 0.1 plus pi over 4 plus pi n, and this is all divided by 5, right? divided by 5, I'll put this coefficient, 0 0.2. Now, uh, let me just simplify this a little bit. So it's 4, 4 n pi divided by 4. So 4 is a common denominator. And pi can go outside of it. 1 plus, and I don't have this. <coughs> so that's what it is. Or, you know what, that's probably easier if I will just open this. And this is 1 fifth, so I will put 20 here. That's easy. So that's the answer. And, uh, well, I do put a couple of values uh, of this uh, into the notes calculated for n is equal to 0, if n is equal to 1, and n is equal to 2. And I'm getting these points. And now, as n increasing, as you see, again, uh, we are increasing by if n is increasing by 1, my whole thing, my time is increasing by 4 pi over 20, which is pi over 5, which is exactly the same as, so the distance between uh, local uh, extremes is also pi over 4, uh, pi over 5, sorry. So that's what makes, again, it's almost periodic. Now, my final problem is what are the extreme values maximum minimum maximum minimum deviation to stretching or squeezing stretching or squeezing now how can i find them well since i know this point and i know the equation all i have to do is my first extreme is equal to x of t0 where t0 is, is n is equal to 0, whatever it is. Then a1 is equal to x of t1, etc. So, and again, I did, I did have some calculations. I um, calculated the values of this, 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 and this. And obviously it is diminishing. This is a plus something, this is a minus, but the absolute value is smaller. This is again plus value is smaller, and this is minus value is smaller, etc. So it goes exponentially diminishing amplitude. So these are the problems which are related to viscose uh, environment and oscillations in this environment. I do suggest you to read the notes for this uh, lecture. They have a much better picture, and uh, then there are some numerical calculations and you can actually see that the numbers are decreasing and these numbers are exactly the same. That's it, thank you very much and good luck.